Her name was on the marquee outside the club that night, The Satin Doll, live. But this was not like any public performances she had ever done before. She seemed to know exactly what I liked and how to reach and awaken in me some strange new erotic feelings. As she did things no other girl or woman had ever done before, I began to relax, to enjoy her private personal performance just for me. As she danced so slowly, naked before me, she said, I know you don't like silicone breasts like most men do, but I do know you like them big. I do know that you love my big thick nipples. I want you to enjoy them and play with them like this. She pinched them really hard until they were swollen and stood out like an inch thick. I want you to lick and suck them like this. She said as she took them in her mouth, licking all around and sucking them deep and hard. She said, and I know you love my big hairy pussy with these big meaty lips because I can see it in your eyes when you look at me. <laughs> Watch these big meaty pussy lips bloom into a rose. And as she stroked and parted them, they grew like big rose petals. Then she said, I know you really like how big and swollen my clitoris gets when it gets aroused just from looking at me. Look at it, daddy. See how big it is and it's all yours, baby. Look how big she gets. She's as big as your thumb and she wants you, daddy. Have you ever seen a clit this big? It was almost as big as the top half of my thumb. I almost told her that I had seen one other woman whose clit was even bigger, it seemed, when Annie's grandmother let me touch hers the night I woke to find her with my six-year-old penis in her mouth. But I didn't. She stopped to give me another snort of cocaine and heroin before turning back to me as she began moving her body and buttocks, slowly inches from my face, as Cecilia had done that day so long ago, when my innocence had been shattered. She parted her buttocks, revealing her asshole. She said, you like that, don't you, daddy? You want it, don't you? It was like she had transported me away from all the haunting images of death that stained me. She turned and laid me on my back as she could see the effect her actions had produced in me. As she took my erection in her hand, she told me, let me worship you. I want to worship you. I felt electricity in my loins as she knelt there on the floor between my parted legs and stroked my penis with her hands. She licked me all over with her tongue, everywhere her tongue could cover. When I felt the hotness of her breath and her mouth engulfing the head of my penis, I surrounded... <laughs> oh my goodness. When I felt the hotness of her breath and her mouth engulfing the head of my penis, I surrendered to her adoration of my young, strong body. She rolled me to her first orgasm, facing me, playing with her clit, sucking her own breast, putting on a show for me. Then she gave me another snort of speedball and rolled me with her back towards me, reaching back and spreading her big, creamy, white-ass cheeks to let me see everything she knew I wanted to see. With each circular thrust up and down, and just when I thought I wouldn't be able to hold back anymore. She announced that she wanted me to fuck her in the ass. I had fucked her in her pussy and between her massive double D 38 inch tits, even in her armpits and mouth. But now she wanted me to come in her ass. I thought she had been wild and nasty before, but then she lay on her stomach, reached back and guided me into her anus. She asked me to rub her clit for a while while I was pumping in and out of her ass. But when I couldn't do it sufficiently, as I gave it to her as deep and as hard as I could, she moved my hand away and said, here, let me do this. She began to masturbate her own pussy and clit, begging me not to stop giving it to her in the ass. She went wild, moaning and crying, how she had never known a man like me and how she had never let just anyone fuck her in the ass. She never wanted to give herself in this way to any man but me. I knew she was probably lying to me, but all her nasty talking had me feeling more excited and stimulated. After we had finished, she had come back with warm soapy water and towels. She cleaned my penis. We lay there together and she told me, Dan, Riley, I think I'm falling in fucking love with you. I know you don't want to hear this and I don't want to say it, but I think it's true. I'm falling in love with you and it scares the hell out of me. I swore when I was 15 years old on my own that I would never fall in love with any man ever. I know you have a girlfriend and I ain't never going to be jealous of any woman or girl you may be involved with. 
I know we're not gonna ever play house or have no little white picket fence, but I'm yours and I'll never betray you. I will kill for you if you ever ask me to. There is something about you. I've known a lot of men in my life, most of them tricks or fools. I've known real gangsters too, and none of them holds a candle to you. What's so scary is that you're still young and are only just beginning. I just wanna be part of it. I'll always have your back and I'll never lie to you or be disloyal. You'll never have a more gangster bitch than me in your corner. I told her, okay, as long as you don't get jealous of other women and are honest and loyal to me and you have faith in me and do what I tell you when I tell you, then we can continue on the road of this danger and adventure together as we seem to be on. She said, hell, if you wanna just fuck some other bitch, you tell me and I'll get her for you as long as you don't go falling in love with some dumb bitch who isn't even worthy of you. I'll even do threesomes with you if that's what you want, but I'll have to agree with who it is because I like girls sometimes too, especially younger, innocent type girls, not tramps or bitches with diseases. So now I had a crime partner, a gangster bitch who could still teach me so much that I still needed to learn. I told her no more contract killings unless it's for a lot of money than what we made off with with this train wreck and no women or children. She could see I was still shaking about the old lady and she told me that she knew I never intended to go through with hurting her and that I didn't really kill her. That maybe God or whoever is out there in control of the universe used me to help this old lady out when she was really gonna die anyway. From everything I told her about what happened, that's the way it looked to her. And besides, we both knew that if I hadn't said yes to the contract, her nephew would have just hired someone else who might have actually done all the sick shit he wanted to do to her. That, as far as the nephew, he deserved what he got and that she knew that when he told her to tell me to kick rocks, he was gonna hire a real hitman to kill us instead of a young punk ass kid like me. She knew I was gonna make him eat his words and she knew that when he threatened her sons, I wasn't going to ever let her boys be in danger like that because of how much her boys looked up to me. She knew how much I cared about them too. So she was glad he was dead because now her sons would be safe. The irony of it all is that while this was true, not only would she be involved in the murder of my mother years later, but so would one of her sons. Again, I'm getting way ahead of myself in this story. So I had all this money and I was going to drink trying to smoke, trying to do everything I can to deal with the fact that I had just killed a man and an old lady, if you want to count her. I didn't kill her and I never intended to, so I didn't count her. I had just killed a man and by the same token, this bitch, now all of a sudden, I was God in her life. She thought she was going to turn me out. I ended up turning her out. So we organized our own little game. We started doing robberies, major armed robberies, and we were good. I had my crime partners, Tony and Dorian, she had hers. Her main crime partner, Jimmy, he was a stone cold killer. He came from the Vietnam War. He had come back from Vietnam. He had to go to Leavenworth because when he was in Vietnam, he was smuggling dope back with corpses and they caught him. This guy was like 29, but he was a killer. Somehow, Satin had hooked up with him and he was her pistol guy. If she had something that needed to be done, she would throw it to him. So we got hooked up together and his crime partner was this big fat faggot that he butt fucked. He also had an old lady, she was cool. Jimmy was bad. He had a nice old lady, loyal bitch. And he was his punk too. So then I had my partners too. One night we were sitting around. Jimmy was about money. That's all he was about. So she was pairing me and Jimmy together. She wanted us to do this particular job to see how well we work out together. Satin had a job planned for us to do. I told Jimmy, no, let's do a different job. I explained to him, this one will be easier and we'll get more money. So he looked at her and said, you know what? I'm gonna go with his plan. And I could see right then and there that she was like, what? She didn't like that she had just lost control. We went and we did the robbery and everything went according to how I said it would. We made a lot of money. Then there was another incident where we had a major job she had planned. 